everyone, and welcome to The Spot Check with Sherelle Starr, an informative and upbeat show where I and people from around the internet give you an unfiltered perspective about the topics of the day. We plan to dive into everything from news, issues, and fun updates and cover everything from fashion and beauty to politics and culture, of course, to technology and entertainment. So let's jump right in. Beauty may be skin deep, but it seems like you have to have really thick skin if you decide not to conform to traditional beauty standards. A few months ago, singer Alicia Keys sent Twitter all a flutter when she announced that she was going to go sans makeup moving forward. And like clockwork, the negative comments rolled in, accusing Keys of being anti-makeup, self-promoting, and just unrealistic. To be fair, Keys also received tons of support from people who loved the idea of her deciding to love her natural self and found her announcement to be very courageous. But in a world where beauty is a billion-dollar industry and beauty and success are intertwined, can someone even someone like Alicia Keys, be successful while going makeup free? So I asked the spot check panel, and here's what they had to say. The fact that we even have to question if Alicia Keys wearing no makeup is going to help or hinder her career is exactly why the beauty industry needs this no makeup movement. Um, Alicia Keys wearing no makeup will absolutely help her career because she's showcasing to the world that she's commanding respect through her confidence and through her talent as a musician and a songstress and that confidence will definitely outweigh the superficial. Alicia Keys, no makeup, great career move. People are going to know who you are because they're talking about it everywhere and you're on The Voice and so everyone's seeing it now. Great move. You know, I really don't think it's going to help or hinder her career. I think it's just something for people to talk about. But I will say that I think the biggest frustration um, and the biggest issue isn't that she's going makeup free but that she's a black woman or she's a woman of color or she's a woman in general who just made a decision about owning her beauty and she literally doesn't care what anyone thinks. So I think that's what's more offensive to people than the fact that she's not wearing makeup. I can only see it helping her career just because it's something different. Like everyone else, like it's about the contour, about like the perfect eyebrow arch and she's out there saying, you know what, I want to embrace my natural beauty. And of course she's already beautiful regardless, but I can only see it helping her career. I think Alicia Keys should be able to do what Alicia Keys wants to do. You know what I mean? Listen, I go to the grocery store, the H-E-B with the beats. And quite frankly, I think Alicia spend, needs to spend a little bit more time in the studio rather than trying to do causes and worry about what we're doing and where we're going. Alicia, it seems like every year you wake up and say, hmm, I need something to do. I got a clue for you. Sing something. Work on those vocals, my darling. Don't worry about my face because the lip gloss stays on. Julie, girl, you are hilarious, and I totally get your point. Some people feel comfortable rocking a painted lip or blushed cheek, but some people can totally take it too far. Over the last few years, there's been an explosion of filtering and retouching apps that make some users' photos unrecognizable. Here's what the spot check had to say about those. Let me tell you something. If you go to bed looking like the queen and wake up looking like Quasimodo, that's a problem. No man wants to see you going through metamorphosis, okay? These apps and these angles that you're taking on Instagram, it's a real letdown when someone sees you in person like, who are you? And you're like, it's me. And they're like, bye bye I don't use filters. I don't believe in the retouching apps. I've been blessed with this skin. Thank you, Jesus. Don't need them. Not interested. For those that need them, great. But I'm terrified that somebody would see me and say, oh my God, she doesn't look like her pictures. I don't like highly retouched images. I think they look kind of cheesy. I don't think they're modern. Um, I really love when I see magazine covers that have celebrities and models on them and you can see their moles and their beauty marks and it just looks real. Okay, so I'm in 100% agreement with the spot check panel. Filtering and retouching apps are all right as long as you don't retouch out the real you. Still, sometimes I wonder about these retouching apps and the ever exploding makeup industry. Is their standard of beauty unrealistic? Or are we all just trying to be creative? I think that's 50-50. I think that uh, the definition is slightly unrealistic just because of all of the Instagram makeup we got going on. But at the same time, I think that that's a way for people to be able to express themselves creatively. Yes, our definition of beauty is unrealistic. Um, I see people continue, continually trying to be someone or something that they're not. Um, and the only thing that's realistic is yourself. Yeah. 
I agree. I definitely think that it's going a little too far with the beauty and the expectations. But you know what? It's all about self-confidence. The biggest beauty mark that you have is being a self-confident woman. And that's without lip gloss, without lashes, without anything. You should be able to come out the house and be free to be you at any time. I think confidence is a real mark of beauty, and more women need to get that. If you're confident with a 20-inch weave or you're natural, it doesn't matter. Rock it till the wheels fall off. Just be the best you can be and be confident. The current standard of beauty is changing, and I definitely give that credit to the many communities who have shed light on embracing your natural and inner beauty. Um, however, we've still got a long way to go, people. I mean, runway and cover ready is not the norm for the everyday woman or man. Um, so I think it's really up to each of us to decide what that personal standard of beauty is going to be for our lives and then stand by that. Our definition of beauty is totally unrealistic. Those skinny girls on the runway are not real people. They're not real people. Real people eat food and look like me. I'm totally torn on this one. I don't believe that wearing makeup is a declaration that you don't love yourself. But I do believe that you should be able to go out in public, hang out with your friends, go to work without a stitch of makeup on, and like who you are when you look in the mirror. I myself go without makeup on Sunday. I call it Sans Makeup Sunday, and I try to do it, if I can't do it on Sunday, I try to do it at least once a week because I like who I am, and at the very least, I should allow my skin to breathe and see the sun at least once a week. But Dr. Renee brought up the runway, and I'm so glad she did because beauty isn't just about what you put on your skin. It's also what you look like, your body type, and also your hair. Case in point, Mark Jacobs. If you haven't heard about this, you're about to. He was recently called out for using white models and dreadlocks on his New York Fashion Week runway show. When he got called out, instead of apologizing or explaining why he chose to use the models that he did, he instead tried to call out black women for straightening their hair. He also used the phrase, I don't see race, I only see people. Here's what the panel had to say about that. Mark Jacobs is obviously a jerk. And like a jerk, he gave a jerk-off, knee-jerk answer to the question about black women having their hair. Well, black women straighten their hair. Boo-boo. You do know not all black women are born with kinky and curly hair. There are black women all over the world in the West Indies and Africa with stra straight hair down to the floor and beautiful curly textured hair. Next time you pop up at the mouth about what we do and what we're straightening and suggesting that straightening hair is taken from white women, I got two words for you. Two. Goo gal. When it comes to Mark Jacobs and his recent runway show, the glyphs and pieces that I did see, I actually did find it really creative and very entertaining. What I didn't like was his response when he found out people were offended by it. I think it was really insensitive to say, hey, um, black women, nobody says anything to them when they straighten their hair. To me, he should have stayed in a safer zone, which is that, hey, I was being creative. I didn't mean to be offensive. I don't think, like, in this day and age, like, I don't have a problem with white people wearing dreadlocks. My problem with Marc Jacobs is the fact, like, the way that he reacted to it. The fact that he was like, well, black women straighten their hair, so that's cultural appropriation. Like, no, that's a cultural assimilation because we had to do that in order to be seen beautiful in this world as well as to get jobs and there are certain settings to where it wasn't appropriate for us to wear our natural hair so it's not a fair comparison mark jacobs bad move bad move you should have picked some black women some sisters to run walk the runway but then again you probably wouldn't have gotten the stick figures that you had so you chose them, but you messed up, and that's the price you'll have to pay. I didn't particularly feel offended by him using white models, as I felt offended that he didn't pay homage to why he used jet locks and what they meant. Listen, when I first saw the models that Marc Jacob used, I didn't think twice about it. I thought he was just being kind of creative. But then he came at us with that comment, and then I got a little insulted. Can we just all agree that whenever someone says, especially a white person says, I don't see color, what you really are saying to me and what I hear is, I don't see the historical significance of your race. Please stop saying it. It's offensive. Second of all, black women get criticized all the time for straightening our hair. But we also get the added bonus of being fearful of, of losing our job, of being kicked out of school, and just not fitting in society if we choose not to. You don't believe me? It wasn't until two years ago, 2014, when the U.S. military decided to remove their restrictions on black hairstyles. And in August of this year, students at Pretoria High School had to protest school rules that would expel them if they did not straighten their hair. 
And recently, the United States of America Federal Appeals Court ruled that employers have the right to discriminate against people who wear dreadlocks at work, meaning they don't have to hire them. So Mark Jacobs, like Julie said, maybe you should Google the issue before you go popping off at the mouth. But unfortunately, Mark Jacobs isn't the only one to show resistance to understanding the cultural appropriation issue. Magazines like Marie Claire, Cosmo, and a host of others have been called out for attributing black hairstyles to white MMA fighters and celebrities. And they even go further by trying to rename the hairstyle. Here's what the panel had to say about that. I definitely think that it undermines black women. I mean, you can't take something from a culture and try and rename it and call it your own without giving credit where credit is due or giving props to the black community. I mean, it's disrespectful and it also shows that you're ignorant because you haven't taken the time to educate yourself and find out where the origin of these hairstyles actually are. It undermines black women, but not only does it undermine black women, it, it, it makes it very clear that these people, the others, don't have anything else to pull from. They don't have any other inspiration. They don't have any original ideas. And it actually looks kind of silly. So, yes, it does undermine black women, but it also makes them look really desperate. When it comes to all these other magazines and publications having women with box braids and French braids, Caucasian models, and not having any Afro-American or black models at all, to me it says, hey, we love what you're about, we love what you have, but we love it on us. And to me, that is offensive. Non-black people don't really understand the importance and the history behind our hair. Like, I feel like if every non-black person could take, like, a black history black hair 101 class, the world would be a better place. Brie, I love you, girl. And I can think of tons of brands, companies, and celebrities who need to sign up for that class right now. Look, all I can say is stop trying to Columbus everything. You didn't discover it. People were wearing the styles first. Just attribute it to who actually created it. After all, the best creations come from being inspired by the things we see around us. But don't offend people by plagiarizing them. And on that note, one of the most culturally offensive holidays is coming up, and we need everyone to be on their toes. Yes, it's almost time for Halloween, and all its culturally offensive and racist costumes will be on full display. Here are some tips from the Spot Check panel that people should consider before selecting a costume that might culturally offend someone. I think most people should just stray away from Halloween costumes that maybe enforce stereotypes. When you pick your Halloween costume, be very, very careful that you do not do blackface. That is very offensive. Don't do it. You want to dress like a character that happens to be black? Dress like that person. Do not do anything to your skin. Nothing. You'll look silly. You might get called out. It's not going to go over well. For Halloween, I don't care if you want to be Beyonce, if you want to be anybody like don't change the color of your skin to like another skin tone just because i mean it's it's pretty much blackface like you might not realize that it is but it is how about no blackface i think that would be a really good start i'm a makeup artist and um somebody actually asked me to do that once when she asked me i said you mean blackface and she went it's like she didn't even get it anyone that wants to go ahead and be Wearing things to offend anyone culturally, they should watch out because that means we coming for them. And <laughs> I just don't think it would be a good idea, especially this time around with a lot of the things that we're going through. They should think twice. Y'all listen to the spot check panel and watch your back. This may not be the year for culturally insensitive foolishness. Red face, yellow face, black face. Just don't do it. Don't be that fool crying on November 1st because you got fired from your job because other people put your racist butt on blast and called out your company too. Just pick a different costume. Well, that's it for this episode of The Spot Check with Sherelle Starr. Thanks so much for all your video submissions. And don't forget to correct the record and leave feedback. You can also follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and of course, Twitter at Sherelle Starr and on Facebook at Not Just a Girl in a Dress. Till next time, bye.